said it before and I'll say it again and I don't care if it bothers some people. If you're a watch collector and you don't love Seiko, you have no heart. But don't worry. Think of me as the Wizard of Oz. Yes, a scam artist who doesn't show his face, but more importantly, maybe I can help you love Seiko watches too and finally get that heart. Let's see what this SPB297 does for you. I'm borrowing this watch from Ryan. Ryan has been trying to quit watches. I think maybe a lot of us have been there. So for Ryan's sake, I'm going to be extra critical of this watch. Maybe that'll get him off this crazy train for good. The SPB297 is yet another variation of the 62 Moss inspired SPB watches. Those debuted in 2020. Those first watches were the 143, 145, 147, and 149. Those did, and really still do, represent a lot of what collectors wanted from Seiko. And that goes for this SPB297 also, because the only thing new and different with this watch is the dial. Somehow, despite the popularity of this line of watches, this is the first of these Skin Diver inspired Seikos I've spent time with. But they're all very much my speed and style. So I was excited to try one on for a few days. I mean, it was a terrible burden, Ryan, to wear this heavy piece of hot garbage on my 7 inch wrist. The 297 and all the 62 Moths reissues are 40.5 millimeters across. 47.4 millimeters long and 13.7 millimeters thick. Seiko's website says 13.2 millimeters thick, but no way, it ain't. Unless Seiko is measuring using nautical millimeters, which is unlikely because those don't exist. 200 meters of water resistance, 20 millimeter lugs, sapphire crystal, and weighs about 180 grams on the full bracelet. With the bracelet size to my 7 inch wrist, the watch weighs about 166 grams. Now that's hefty, not unwearable, not even close, but after a full day on the wrist, this could get tiring for some people. Naturally, I played around with this watch on a NATO style strap and a leather strap. The drilled lugs make wardrobe changes super easy for when you need to go from the boardroom to the bedroom, from the gym class to the gin glass, I don't know. At no point is this watch dressy though, it's always going to look sporty, regardless of the strap, but swapping is just fun and when else do we get to play dress up? This lists for $1,250 and is a special edition watch. It's a Save the Ocean watch. This is a program Seiko has where some of the proceeds from the Save the Ocean watches go to the diving community that's reporting and removing debris from the ocean. Seiko doesn't say how much money they contribute, at least I couldn't find that information. So if you know a reliable source, put it in the comments and I'll pin the comment. Just like with other Seiko Save the Ocean watches, this 297 has a nature-themed dial. Seiko and Grand Seiko, they love to do a textured dial, especially if they can tenuously associate it with a, a natural body or a geological event or something maybe you find on the ground. Seiko says this dial is inspired by the intricacies of glacial formations. Okay, I guess. I mean, it looks more like the ocean to me, but whatever the simile, it is kind of cool. From a distance, it just looks blue, but up close you can see the depth and even some metallic sheen to it. Even at affordable levels, Seiko really knows how to do interesting dials. If what I mean is, Ryan, dude, this dial is messed up. It's like bumpy and stuff. Like what happens to your fingers when you've been in the bath too long? Behind that dial is the Seiko 6R35 movement. Its accuracy is plus 25 to minus 15 seconds per day, and it has a 70 hour power reserve. The accuracy, nothing special here, but the power reserve is pretty good for a watch at this price. There are many watches twice this price with half the power reserve. Another thing Seiko does well is loom. Now, this one doesn't have the burn your face off loom that some Seiko dive watches have, but it's pretty good. I'd give it a B plus. I refer to this design as a skin diver inspired design. That's referring to the shape of this case. Skin diver watches became popular in the 1960s. They have this kind of oblong profile and skin diver can also be used to refer to the capabilities of the watch, the, the water resistance specifically usually between 100 and 200 meters of water resistance. Can you dive the Mariana Trench with this watch? No, but you can't dive the Mariana Trench anyway, so don't sweat it. This thing has a depth rating of 200 meters. That's more than enough for what we're gonna put this watch through. 
But if you really want to do some wetsuit diving with the SPB-297, you can. And the bracelet even has a diver's extension, which means you can fit it over a wetsuit. I think, like with a lot of features of watches, this is kind of there just to show off. You can call it an aspirational feature, like the upper half of your car's speedometer or the popcorn button on your microwave. The chunky bracelet clasp has four micro-adjustment holes. Now those aren't aspirational, those are very practical, at least for me. The bracelet end links are solid, but I do find some wiggle between them and the case. And it's not a big deal, but visually I think the bracelet and case don't quite match. The brushing on the two components are very different, and the shape of the end links doesn't quite follow the shape of the case. Pretty minor stuff that kind of makes the watch look all the more toolish, so this could be a plus for you. The case itself is pretty nice with a polished chamfer running along the entire side. It adds a bit of refinement to have some polished surface that's visible when it's on the wrist. The bezel insert is black steel. Not aluminum, not ceramic, steel. I think it'll be interesting to see how and if this bezel takes scratches. Whatever treatment Seiko is using to make this steel black, there's a good chance that it'll scratch through with enough wear. That might actually look really good. There's something really appealing about an object that tells a story with its dings and scratches, or at least I tell myself that every year on my birthday. The bezel has 120 clicks, and the clicks are pretty quiet. I could not capture them for this video. That's the case for a lot of Seiko dive watches. The action is good, it's sturdy, but the clicks are just kind of stealthy. And yes, nerds, the bezel aligns with the chapter ring perfectly, so you'll have to find something else to complain about which I've been trying to do, for Ryan's sake. But between you and me, this is a really appealing watch for the price. It's a wearable size for most people, most people who, who like dive watches. A good power reserve, good water resistance, a bracelet, a well-executed case, and I think for a lot of us, it's one of the best-looking dive watches from Seiko. Not too ostentatious or stylized, but definitely not boring. A little vintage charm without being heavy-handed, and this dial, I really like this dial, whether it's glaciers or the ocean or the fingers of someone who's been in the bath too long. But there are a lot of dial options for this collection. And that's what Seiko does really well. Attractive, relatively affordable sports watches with tons of variations. And if you've been around collectors, you also know that Seiko watches can last for decades with minimal maintenance. Everyone who likes watches should own a Seiko sports watch at some time. And after that, if you still don't appreciate and love Seiko, then I don't think I can help. Your next check-in should be with the cardiologist. <laughs>